The Create Gaming Z2 70 motherboard from MSI is VR ready. We have an updated chipset, so that's new features. But we have some returning favorites, such as the Steel Armor, the Gaming LAN, the Audio Boost, the Military Class, all the cool stuff that we'd come to expect from MSI. It's all neatly listed on the back of the box and segmented, and it's very easy to read. The bundle is a little bit basic. We've got SLI bridge, uh, IO shield, manuals, documentation, and a sticker kit. First impressions of the board, I very much love it or hate it. If you're a fan of black and white, you may be attracted to it, but this dragon claw through the center is a little bit so so. I'm not personally a fan. I do like the shrouding and the covering around the heatsink area. It is very unique and clean. Now, looking at the board, there's quite a lot of features that we need to cover, and the first thing I want to touch upon is the I.O. with the USB ports, PS2 combo, DVI, USB 3.1 type ANC, more USBs, HDMI, audio, and gigabit LAN. So it's got everything that you want on there with the exception of Wi-Fi. Now, DDR4 has been ramped up and we now have steel armor around the slot. Whether it's just something for looks or not, it doesn't matter to me because I love it. M2, we have dual slots. CRT arrangement is a little bit odd and this seems to happen a lot with Create. We have some vertical, some horizontal, six in total and a right angled USB 3.1 header. Audio has been amped up with audio boost. Input outputs are a little bit odd. We've got parallel support for printers, but apart from that, everything is good with plenty fan headers. So yes, first impressions of the board are good. It's very much a love it, hate product. So this board, like the other Z270 boards that I've had in for review, had no problem overclocking the 7700K to 5 gigahertz. Now, like some of the higher end stuff, I actually ran at 5100 megahertz or 5.1 gigahertz. And that was completely stable, it was hassle free. Now it doesn't have some of the one click solutions and the easier options that you see elsewhere, but the BIOS is really good. Now looking at the performance, Things to consider, I have a comparison here for the Asus Z270 Prime and then the Strix Gaming. This MSI Create on the day of review, review is actually cheaper than both. So in terms of performance, it sits exactly where I want it to do so. Now I'm really pleased to say MSI has taken this opportunity to address some of the issues with the past products, particularly with the Create. It had weaker USB, M2 and SATA performance. It was much further down the chart and that was reflective in some other models in Z172. MSI have really got it together and tweaked. One of the other additions is the switch from Killer to the Intel LAN. Now that delivers much better mins and average performance when it comes to networking and I'm really pleased MSI has implemented this final change. So let's talk about the MSI Create Z270. I have a few things I want to talk about before we get to the facts and the performance and the numbers and the things that kind of matter the most. You know, I just want to share my personal feelings about Create and then this particular model. So my issue with Create is it doesn't know what it wants to be. It's constantly evolving and changing and it's almost good, but it's not good enough. You know, my issue is it changes too much. We've had some Intel versions on, I think the first one was Z97, and then it was quickly rehashed and changed um, for an SLI version, I think we had, and then we had an AMD version, which was really poor. It was just a very plain looking board with some white DDR slots and the PCI Express slots were white. It didn't really have any sort of vibe or sense to it. Then we've had an X99 version which um, went back full circle and then we had the Cobra black and white theme to it. Then we had Z170 which had this sort of weird S white band running through it and then we went back to the MSI gaming dragon side. And then this, it's pretty obvious in case you haven't picked up on it, that's just the sort of claw um, from the dragon straight through the board. And when I first heard about the product, you know, in my head, I imagined it looking better than it does. It, you know, it looks good on paper, the idea, the images online, it doesn't look too bad, but in person, I'm just a little bit disappointed. Now that's my personal preference. Um, I really wish they had just gone another direction. The black and the white element is epic. I love it. That, you know, really appeals to me, but the way it's been implemented with that dragon claw, it just seems a bit, you know, childish and... It doesn't work for me, um, you know, it could have been a lot more elegant. So that's my personal sort of 
bit out of the way. Um, in terms of performance, you know, before we get to that, I should sort of digress again. I, I didn't mean to, but it's unscripted, so bear with me. Pricing is a bit of a mess right now. When any product launches, you know, I can't really talk about the global pricing. It's too complicated. I have to focus on UK pricing um, and availability. The pricing on the first sort of week or two, you can almost disregard it. You know, you can you can look at the pricing and think, well, it's going to be about that because it will bounce up and down a lot as competitors and retailers and, you know, everyone sort of gets the grips of what the final pricing will be. But in terms of what I've been told about where this will sit, I think it's pretty fair, you know, when you consider the uh, feature set and then the performance that it's delivered. So if you're looking for a black and white based motherboard, this is probably going to be the one that you do feel yourself gravitate towards. Um, Z270 as a whole, everything's sort of quite toned down this time around. There's lots of carbons and greys and blacks and whites. So there's a lot more choice for the consumer and, you know, in turn that makes it harder for the crates to sort of step out and grab your attention. Um, now obviously, as I said before, if dragons and blacks and whites and something a bit unique is your thing, boom, you know, nothing really to think about. It, it's gonna tick all the boxes. It'll be good for you. The BIOS, as I've said in past video reviews, I absolutely adore the video of BIOS. I love the idea of just having sort of six tabs either side, you slide over them, you jump into them, everything is just there. Um, it loads up to an easy sort of um, display where everything's just on tap. There's no hassle with this BIOS. It isn't as extreme and it doesn't have as many options when it comes to tweaking or playing around as what I've seen on some of the competition boards. But when it comes to overclocking, because of the way that KB, way, um, KB Lake sorry, works, it's so easy to overclock anywhere. So yes, it's, it's going to be appealing towards anyone that likes the colour set. Um, you like the sort of dragon element. You want to keep your budget realistic, but you don't want to sacrifice too much on performance and features. You know, it's a good all around product in that sense. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, as I said, my personal preference is that it's not quite for me, but I, you know, I'd imagine a lot of you guys do like it. So let me know in the comments below. Is this the board you are hoping for? What would you change? What do you like? You know, and I'll pass this feedback on to MSI directly. And who knows, perhaps in the future we can get something that appeals to us wider audience but for now thanks for watching hope you've enjoyed the tour there's a lot more a ridiculous amount of kb content still to come so i'll catch you guys in my next